Hello everyone. My name is Judy Byrne and I'm an EFT master and I want to talk to you a little bit about what EFT is. EFT is an energy therapy but it's an energy therapy that is used both for physical and for emotional uh, problems. The idea behind EFT is that stuff happens, it disrupts the body's energy system, the disruption causes. What it causes might be physical, it might be emotional, it might be a combination of the two. The point of intervention in EFT is on the energy system, on the body. The focus of your conscious and unconscious mind is on the effects that have been caused. So you'll be focusing on the pain, on the emotion. But EFT also has a way of addressing or ways of addressing the original stuff that happened. So sometimes just tapping on your body, focusing on the symptom is enough. Everything just somehow finds a way of clearing itself. But very often we do need to go back to the originating stuff that happened. And that can be things that are as big as post-traumatic stress disorder. EFT is a wonderful way of dealing with people who are really seriously traumatized. So now we're talking tsunamis, disasters, people who have been in a situation where they thought, I'm not going to survive this, that really big stuff that gives people flashbacks and gives them nightmares and gives them the hypervigilance uh, hyper that will make somebody lie on the ground the minute a car backfires, that sort of fight-flight response still overreacting to everything. So that heavy end of trauma, but also, and this is one of the things that I think is really wonderful about EFT, it also works on the small t trauma. The little things that happen when you're young, as a child, as a teenager, at the time when you're forming your view of who you are, your identity, how you think about yourself, the little things like coming home from school saying, Mummy, I got 99 on my test. And Mummy says, what happened to the other mark? Or you come home and you say, I got 100. And she says, how many others got 100? So, OK, you can see how a drip drip of that kind of response is going to give you the opinion you'll never be good enough. Whatever you do, it won't be good enough. You are not enough. That goes from being small t trauma in a child to a serious identity issue in an adult. Or another scenario, somebody whose mother doesn't show them love. What five-year-old thinks my mother's not good at doing this loving stuff? A five-year-old thinks I am not lovable. So again, these small t traumas, these instances of where they didn't get the response, the love that they needed in a specific situation, spills over into somebody going into adult life, I am not lovable. So what sort of relationships do they have? Well, maybe they don't have any. Or maybe they always have really bad ones because however badly someone treats them, it's better than they were expecting. So this is one of the beauties of EFT, that you can go back to those small traumas just as you can to big ones and use EFT as a way of erasing that. One of the other things that I want to tell you about EFT before I do a bit of it is that I see it as almost having two faces. It is, at one level, a very simple self-help technique. Everybody can learn in five minutes to do EFT for themselves. At the other level, it is a very sophisticated therapy technique. And I think there is a danger that people who encounter EFT with a therapist who's very experienced and very skilled and does wanders off all over the place, picking issues up, throwing them back, reframing, all the very sophisticated things that a therapist may do with a client can give clients the idea that it's not something that they can do for themselves. So I see it as almost two different EFTs. The very simple EFT that people can use for themselves and they can use it whether they're seeing a therapist or not. They can use it if they're having therapy but then they need first aid for themselves between sessions. Uh, or people who've never been to therapy can learn to do it in a very simple way that I'm going to show you in a moment. And that, I think, is very different from the kind of therapy that, the kind of EFT you might experience in a therapy session. And I think it's really important to be clear about that because otherwise seeing how therapists use it can actually be disempowering. And that's not what EFT is about. So the basic way that you can use it for yourself is 
let's say you've had a row with your boss and you're really angry. So you might say, well, on a scale of one to ten, I'm about a nine. Okay, so that would be your starting number. The procedure is, the first point that you use is tapping on the karate chop point and you use a sentence, even though I'm really, really angry with my boss, I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay, three times on the karate chop point. And then you take out of that the phrase, really, really angry with my boss, or whatever it is, whatever the phrase is. Pick that and use that as you're tapping around the other points that I'm going to show you. And the point of those words is the focus of your attention. One of the things that happens a lot with EFT, I find, is that people are very concerned about what the right words are, as if the words are a magic formula. They're not. The importance of the words is that they really reflect what you're feeling. They really affect, reflect where you need to take your focus. So for that reason, I don't particularly encourage people to tap on anxiety. Anxiety is a head word. It's a book word. It's almost a way of distancing yourself from the feeling. You don't feel anxiety. You feel something like a leaden lump in my stomach. If you tap on the leaden lump in your stomach, you're much more likely to get a result than if you tap on anxiety. Okay, so we've got as far as even though, three times, even though I'm really, really angry with my boss, I deeply and completely accept myself. Top of the, the next point is the top, the crown of the head. If you go up with your, with your fingers from the tops of your ears, the point where they meet is the crown of the head, and you tap a bunch of fingers around it six, seven, up to ten times, even more, if, you, if, more if, you, if it feels right. Okay, repeating, really, really angry with my boss. The next point is the eyebrow point. Straight up from the tear duct, on the eyebrow, on the bone. Repeating again, really, really angry with my boss. Then you go to the side of the eye, still on the eye socket, not out on the temple, on the eye socket, really, really angry with my boss. Underneath, really, really angry with my boss. Top lip, really, really angry with my boss. Really, really angry with my boss. Top lip is about halfway. Chin is again about halfway. The next point is the junction of the collarbone, the first rib and the breastbone. You can find it by going around under your collarbone until you feel it meeting up with other bones. A little bit of a dip there. Really, really angry with my boss. And the final point of this sequence is under the arm at nipple level or on the bra. And it's a point that feels more sensitive. Apparently, people who do martial arts tell me that it's a point you aim for in karate because it's a very vulnerable point, and you can some feel that vulnerability with your fingers. Some people feel it really strongly. Some can only just feel it, but that's how you distinguish it. So you then repeat the sequence, still using the same reminder phrase. Calibrate again. One to ten, what level is it, is it at now? And then if it's not hasn't gone right down, reword it slightly, even though I still have some of this, even though I'm still a bit, and go around the sequence again. Okay? Now, that whatever you see people doing with EFT, going back to that simple formula will always work for you. It might not be the quickest way, but it will always get there. You just have to be persistent. And one of the other little bits of that that I would like to draw your attention to is the... It's a good way of letting go the tension, the energy of doing it, but also of noticing if anything else comes up for you. Because one of the joys of EFT is the way that it just kind of takes you where you need to go. You know, the times that I'm working with clients and somebody will say, I'm sorry, my mind's wandered. I've just, I don't know why, I've just found myself thinking about a time when my father said such and such. Their mind hasn't wandered. Their unconscious mind has said, this is connected to that. Go there and you'll find what you need to find. So even though I'm saying that you can, by persistence, by doing it very mechanically in that way, you will get results for yourselves, if you notice something else coming up, then follow it. Go to the thing that's come up. And then it's always a good idea to come back to where you started and just check out the original thing that you were working with.